So answering more of your questions from 2018, this one is for Michael Holmes, and this is about mixing a track on iOS. So I'm going to open up Miss Otis Regrets, which is a tune I recorded last year. And as you can see, there are quite a few tracks on this, and they are all audio tracks. I used only the internal mic to record all the parts. So, and that one of the reasons I've chosen this is because Mixing audio tracks is always going to be a bit harder than mixing the instruments together because the instruments on GarageBand have been made beautifully uh, and they are all sort of they will have a little bit of compression they've all been sort of everything's been worked out so that it sounds full with no sort of deficiencies or no problems so I'm going to instead use this so I'm going to listen first to the piano track at the top Now, um, in fact, what I'll do is I, I will go from the top with all of the tracks. So I've got a collection of things. I've got my piano, my violin and my, my bass and then my lead vocals. Otis regrets she's unable. Now all of the faders, all of the volume sliders on the left hand side here are all have all got a yellow circle and that's because they are all automated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go into automation here and just switch it off. I'm going to do that for all of the um, all of the channels here. I'll explain automation in a bit, but I'm going to switch it off so that I can change levels. Um, if you try and change levels in automation, it'll just revert to where the it thinks the level was. So now I'm going to click done on that. Now, my first job with any audio recording is to filter out the bass end from things that I don't need bass on. This to an extent includes the piano, but I'm not going to go too mad on that because actually the piano's got some lower notes in it anyway. Now, in order to get to access all the EQ and all everything else, we go to the sliders at the top here. On an iPhone, it's called tracks, track controls. Um, and then it reveals the same things. An iPhone, you can do all of this as well, but it's a little bit more buried in menus. So this is the iPad fifth generation of 2017 that I'm currently uh, using. So at the moment I've got in my visual EQ here, yes, I have cut a little bit of the bass out on the piano. The reason being is that if you've got lots and lots of audio tracks, the bass is going to be, it's going to record the low end of whatever instrument you're playing. Now, admittedly, on a violin, if you're playing the top notes, that's not going to be a huge issue, but you can get some background noise and some, and some sort of bowing noise, which can be in those bass frequencies. And so when you're playing that, you think, why is it sounding so, it's sounding really muddy. The reason is, it could be the fact that you've got to cut your 100 hertz from your channels. So, of course, I'm not going to do that on the bass. And actually what I did with the bass here, because I'm sort of going through this with a sort of retrospective approach, is I actually put a compressor on it so that it just squashes it down a bit. If I take the compressor away, I get a much more dynamic bass sound, but it would lose its energy quite quickly. Reinstate the compressor with those two notes. You can hear those notes last much longer, underpinning the rest of the mix. Now the violin is the next track down, I believe. Yep, okay. So what I've done with that is I've put a bit of reverb on it. Now reverb is not always, is not always desirable, really. It depends on the, the, the music, but 
whatever the amount of reverb you think it's going to need, maybe halve it. That's a rule of thumb. I learned that years ago from somebody. He said, whatever reverb you put on it, turn it down to halfway and think, oh, yeah. It's just a piece of advice I've picked up over the years, really. So if I do that with a violin... really does is it makes you listen holistically to the mix and think is that reverb actually sitting correctly there so there's my I've got a, a solo guitar down here as well um, just like a little intro thing now we listen to that noise at the beginning we don't want that at all you can hear the fact that I've pressed go and I'm sort of settling with the guitar ready to play it don't want that at all so I can go in here, in fact I'm going to close the effects down and the effects and the volume sliders so that I've got maximum space on the screen with which to work. Um, I'm going to open that right up until it says snap to grid off at the top here. Um, and then I'm going to just drag the beginning of it forward until you can hear the first note or rather see the first note, but check it anyway. Yeah, OK, that's fine. Now, the guitar is quite dull sounding. I've done that kind of on purpose. I've, I was aiming for a bit of an older sound here, but I could take the, the treble back up here. Now, things like guitar surface noise, like the vibrato, there's not much you can do about that. The idea, really, the best idea is to listen to it in the mix and see if it bothers you. And if it does, you might have to do the guitar again because it's... Um, it's actually quite a, um, a uh, you know, quite a present sound. As you can see, I've taken a lot of the bass end away. It's that large Hofner President guitar that I've got, a big hollow body thing. So it's quite bassy anyway. It also makes a difference on how close to the mic you record because there's this thing called the proximity effect, which means that the closer you get to a mic, the more bass end it's going to pick up. So if you've got something that's quite bassy, but you don't want the bass from it, you could try recording slightly further away. This is quite fun, this, the experimenting with the internal mic to see what it can do. And this is kind of born of my own sort of curiosity over the years with recording equipment and using stuff to its most sort of, yeah, to its fullest extent. So um, I'm going to just close that page down now. Now, I did put a compressor on that guitar as well, which may be also one reason why you can hear those bits of surface noise. If I go in and have a look at my, yeah, my compressor is quite draconian. Um, I think that's just, I wanted the, the guitar to sit on that mix. But if I maybe disable the compressor. I can't really hear much below that violin. I mean, I'm kind of playing solos on violin and guitar, which is not ideal, I suppose. But if I reinstate the compressor, the guitar and the violin will work together. So that they're just answering each other there. OK, so. Now I'm going to go on to the, the vocals. Now, recording vocals with the internal mic of the iPad is interesting because you, certainly it's not going to set the world on fire with its quality. So what I would usually have on the lead vocals is a little bit of top end boost. But be very careful because it's quite tinny around this sort of area. Miss O regrets she's unable to lunch today madam so if i really ramp the bass up on my vocal it'll just swamp everything else that's meant to have that low end that is the acoustic bass and to a certain extent the piano so i'm going to take that back down miss otis regrets she's unable 
to lunch today. Now, there's not much you can do about the deficiency of the deficiencies, if you like, of the internal mic. There's not a huge amount you can do, but it's really interesting the result you can get. I mean, this is just the iPad, nothing else. No other cables, no recording equipment, nothing, apart from a pair of headphones so that you can listen to each track. So, just moving on, I've got some backing vocal parts. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solo those out so that you can just hear them. Beg your pardon, they're string parts. I've got vocal parts. Ooh, stop, stop, stop. Sorry, it's about to record. So um, I'll just play the string parts back for you. <laughs> recorded with a sort of schmaltzy sort of Nat King Cole muted violin 1940s 50s type sound oh um, I've got something soloed yeah lead vocals there we go now you want the strings or any backing parts to be there you want to be able to hear them of course if you listen in depth but not for them to take over so that they're all quite low in the mix here. If I was to bring these up and, you know, it'd just be, you know, it would be like He's someone has simply hasn't brought the fader down. To lunch today. Yeah, I mean, that's just way over the top. Perhaps they could be a bit louder than they were, but the answer is just to listen to the mix a couple of times all the way through. Now, when you are mixing and you're listening back to your mix, don't look at the iPad because your sight is gonna take away some of what your ears should be doing. Don't forget, this isn't gonna be played on somebody else's iPad in GarageBand. It's gonna be played on a pair of speakers or you know, a CD or whatever you're gonna export your thing on. So listen with that in mind. See, I think the strings are a bit better, a bit louder, actually. Um, not sure. Ah, this, I think, is a bass solo. Oh, sorry, violin solo. So, I've got two tracks of violin. So, this regrets. No, one track of violin. Now notice with the violin, I also cut the beginning of the track off so that you haven't got any unnecessary noise before and after your recordings. Now I've got some vocals here. Now backing vocals, you can. there are two schools of thought here. Either you can compress the living daylights out of them or you can leave them uncompressed completely. It depends on what you're doing. I've compressed the lead vocals um, and these backing vocals are also compressed as you can see on here because I'm looking up for a more of a pad sound rather than alliteration. When the mob came and got her. So that's what I've tried to do with that is to is to make the the lead vocals almost like a sort of a sort of soft brass sound almost. There's no words attached. <laughs> Now, audio levels wise, when I open this up, dragged her from the jail. you can see these sort of the, the green meters moving, but there are no figures given. So you don't really know what level it is you're exporting at. Now, if um, you are going to export this to another program for mastering like Final Touch, you can see a video of that on my channel as well. 
What I would advise is that you take the output level down. Now this output level, thinking about it, watching the meters, is not your overall output level. It's these. So we're in a bit of a bind here. What you need to do really is to take all of your levels so that your top level, I think I made this without a mastering program, that's why it was quite loud. But when you look at the top end here, you can see that it's squashed. On the wheel. you can hear the piano compressing quite a lot. Now, that's what we've got here. We've got the piano there. So you'd have to take all of these levels down in order to get a dynamic result. Um, ideally, do it when you're recording. Have everything quite low, excuse me, on the playback mix. And that means that when you're mastering or when you're sending it to an output or sending it to another mastering program, you've got something to play with. Now, at the end, this is where it gets slightly interesting in that you've got lots of noise while I'm pressing stop and then the hiss that will come from the internal mic as all the tracks draw to a close. Now, if I just do that for you. Can hear all sorts of things at the end which is why i had automation switched in so that my outputs could be brought to a safe conclusion now there is however a command that says fade out but every time i've used it it's not done exactly what i wanted it to do so i've used the automation here instead now if i in fact, if I go back into automation, you can actually see the, the, the picture of what's happening much more easily. So if I just look at the ending, you can see that I've muted tracks. Where tracks have finished earlier, I've muted them earlier so that you've got your level at zero on these backing on the backing tracks, leaving the piano just to finish off. I think the piano is the last thing. Yes, the piano and the, and the bass were the last things to finish. So now my output is going to be cleaner. And there we go. So leave a couple of bars at the end because when you send this to iTunes or your mastering plugin, you want a little bit of uh, room at the end and you also want some at the start. Now I let the iPad record for a couple of seconds. This is also recorded with no click track. So you can see that the um, the um, tune starts a little bit further in. That's ideal if you want to, if you're putting this on a CD or something, if you literally go right to the wire. Actually that's about right. But with some audio mastering um, for programs you can you can trim the front off so that you've got a, a nice track with tiny bit of space at the start and then space at the end so there it is i hope that's given you a sort of an insight into how i would mix in GarageBand and the deficiencies that you can overcome with the internal mic and the reason i've done it with these audio tracks is that actually there's a bit more work to do so um hopefully not so much with the instruments